that keep trying to come true. It's all over but the cry. And I can't get over crying over you. Nobody's crying but me Friends all over know I'm crying To forget about how much I care for you It's all over but the dreaming Poor little dream that keep trying to come true. It's all over but the crying. And I can't get over crying over you. But the cry And nobody's crying But me Friends all over No, I'm trying Forget about how much I care for you. It's all over but the dreaming. Poor little that keep trying to come true it's all over but the cry hello everyone my name is morgan webb and i'm adam sessler and we would like to welcome everyone to the first ever bethesda e3 showcase we are currently backstage at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles, home to some of LA's biggest events. Now, right before we came on the air, Morgan and I took a peek behind the curtain. I have to tell you, the stage setup looks amazing. Bethesda went all out for this event. I have to talk about the screen. It is massive, and the images that it shows are stunning. First, the screen nerds out there, and I know you're out there, it's a five millimeter LED screen with a resolution of 1080 by 4048. Because it's all about the resolution. It is. And that screen, <laughs> it weighs 20,000 pounds. That's nice, but what about the sound? It's loud. Yes. The sound is loud. It's really loud. There are more than 80 speakers in the room, including 18 30 inch subwoofers on each side of the stage. It's set up like a rock concert. And when you add everything up, there are 315,000 watts of sound potential. You can literally feel the action. Yes, you can. And all of this equipment was brought in just for the Bethesda showcase. Just to hang everything from the rafters required 32 one ton chain monitors and 27 rolls of duct tape those are always necessary yeah. but don't worry out there in streaming land every <laughs> beautiful pixel and jarring sound will come through clear for you as well there are 10 cameras spread around the venue and the show is being presented in 1080p at 5994 frames per second now I am so excited yes. it's going to look and sound amazing so make sure to turn up your volume at home as well crank it all right, so now we know how it's going to look and sound, but we would like to know what they're going to talk about. Yes, I think we all do. Now, yes. in about 15 minutes, we're going to watch live as Bethesda reveals what you'll be obsessing over in the years to come. Remember to follow us throughout the event on Twitter at 
Beth blog using the hashtag BE3. And now for nearly three decades, Bethesda has been responsible for some of gaming's biggest hits and most well-regarded franchises. From Skyrim and Wolfenstein to Dishonored and Doom, there is a lot to be excited about. We spoke to fans who have been waiting for hours outside of the Dolby Theater and asked them what they are most looking forward to seeing. All right, we're out here on Hollywood Boulevard outside the Dolby Theater. It is a, it's fairly warm out here. It is fairly warm, but despite the heat, fans have been lining up for hours to get their place at the Bethesda E3 showcase. And of course, we would be very disappointed if people did not come out showing their true colors. Yes, they dressed for the occasion. They have dressed for the occasion. We have some vault dwellers here. Yes, everyone seems dressed really well for the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of, are, are all you guys together or? Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, we're all. So you coordinated these outfits? Yeah, we're actually a pretty big group from Southern California that cosplays, mainly Fallout stuff. And so, do I have to ask what you guys are most <laughs> excited about seeing? About Fallout? <laughs> <laughs> no, so you guys co cosplay mostly Fallout stuff. Now, do you have one costume that you wear, or do you guys tend to rotate costumes? We rotate costumes a lot. I know I personally, I made one about four years ago, and we keep adding to it and adding to it and doing new stuff with new content. And All right. uh, we got to bring our friend here. Um, the best part about this interview is going to be that I'm not going to be able to hear a word he says. Hello. How are you? Hello. <laughs> so now my question is, when you guys see more of Fallout 4 tonight, which we've been promised that you will from the trailer that was released, are you guys going to start updating your costumes or making new costumes? I'm going to pull you right right in here because we're getting uh... <laughs> yeah um definitely um i have a con coming up in about a week and i'm already working on the rifle you see inside the trailer so i mean we're pretty like on the ball with this stuff like we're like okay what suits can we make what can we make what does it look like there's a dog let's make that but yeah have, are, have you how ever are you gonna thought? make the dog <laughs> actually you should ask her she is a wonderful person to ask come on over come, come on over down and tell us about how you're gonna make the dog um just making a plushy pattern yeah. I made dog meat from one, but I couldn't bring him because I just, I just had too much stuff to carry. So <laughs> he's at home. Yeah. Otherwise, he would be here. Are, are, are these mics still hot? <laughs> All right, okay, hold on. We'll do that again. Yeah. No, get it, get it, get so, it. So, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, uh, this, this has to be pointed out. This guy has gone and made his own Nuka Cola bottle caps, the currency in Fallout. Um, how long did you work on all these incredibly particular design elements? Uh, pretty much this was a bash together kit that I worked on pretty much about two years ago. So it's an ongoing process. So this put together is probably maybe about a year and a half of just putting things together. It's so, oh, look, Pip-Boy. Got a beautiful Pip-Boy here. Wow, that's awesome. And w would you mind pulling out the, like, the, the, the books? This is bringing back memories that even I forgot of the game, which was the books <laughs> to increase your skills. Yep. Wow. Uh, Going along with the Robco gear, so. Exactly. You can I, I believe that helped you improve your laser weapon skills. If you read Dean's Electronics. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I, I got to say, I, I, I tip my hat to you and all the effort you put into it. And you even, you even have room for a modern You got to make device. sure you have your cell phone. <laughs> We're also joined by the gentleman who is at the front of the line. Manny, how long have you been waiting? Since 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock so. this morning. And that, 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 that makes you think you, you're, you're rather devoted to Bethesda. Is it a particular yeah. game? I'm, I'm just going to guess, but I'm you know, is it Fallout? Yeah, my favorite franchise is Fallout, but all Bethesda games are just the best. So why do you, what did you wait in line so long for? You Because you want to have the best seat? No, I've just been waiting like six years for Fallout 4, so when they announced it, I just had to... So you, you've been waiting in line for maybe five hours, but you've been really waiting for seven years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I came early because my friend, he's over there, he didn't have a ticket, but I got one, so we came early for him. Oh, but so did he get a ticket? I don't know. You don't know we yet? To, we'll find out at 6.30. <laughs> well, I, I, I wish you all the best. Obviously, I, I, I tip of the hat to your level of devotion. I hope you enjoy what's about to come, all right? Thank you so much, Manny. Well, the excitement is definitely building outside, but we are going to have to head back inside yes, right do. now. Yes, we do. But you know what? Let's take some time and... Look again at what got these guys so excited, the Fallout 4 trailer. If 
it's all over but the cry. With the world poised on the brink of war, Voltec is reporting a record number. But me. Folks, uh, it seems we, we've got some breaking news. Stand by. It's all over. No, I'm dry to forget about how much I care for you. We seem to have lost contact with our affiliate stations. Stand by. We do. We do have. We do have coming in confirmed reports of nuclear detonations. My God. Our soldiers were right. War. War never changes. made the internet explode. Yeah, that's the understatement of the year. Now, so far, we only have a little bit of information about this game, but it's been the internet pastime yes. to glean any and all information from this trailer. So the first thing we should definitely talk about is the location. This has not been confirmed by no. Bethesda, but I think it's pretty obvious once you dig into a little, it a little bit that this is Boston. Yeah, I mean, you know, you see Bunker Hill, yes. the, the memorial, you see a yes. rather well-known ballpark. So yes. if this wasn't Boston, then these big monuments somehow in the apocalypse got moved they, to other parts of the United they States. They might have gotten up and walked, but I'm guessing that we're going to be in Boston. You also see the USS Constitution with yes. some super awesome aftermarket parts. I would say so. It, it's yes. a more exciting boat. It is a more exciting boat now. I like it more yes. now. <laughs> um, so I think it's fairly safe to say that it's going to take place in Boston, and that's sort of the first main obvious thing that comes out yeah. of the trailer. The next thing that I think people have been noticing was the skies are a little bit bluer. There's a lot more color, even like saturated color. Yeah. Like Fallout 3 had, you know, that, that kind of sort of green hue, which which makes sense. You know, yeah. the world is over. There was a sense of sickness going on. Everything in, felt in, in, very in sick. Society. That's a good way but to put it. Here the skies are blue. Maybe there is good green policy later on in the apocalypse. It's unclear if this means something in terms of timeline timeline, excuse me. Right. But it looks really nice. That's unquestionable. I mean that's sort of the part where everyone starts speculating. The yeah. skies are a little bluer. Is this in a different part of the timeline maybe use this a little bit later when the skies have cleared up a little bit this is all complete speculation guys i don't want to speak to we, it we but. know nothing but it also <laughs> seems a little more populated i think that's the other like you yeah. see those images of you know the man under the beautiful light just walking down the street yes you know, the, those were rarities of potentially maybe mysterious stranger i mean he's also in a location that used to lit used to be in boston but has been since demolished look so at we'll you just, which is, um, about the Boston. which is sort of interesting <laughs> that they're definitely trying to set that sense of time. This was Boston, you know, stopped at this exact certain moment. So that, that was sort of interesting to see. We don't know if it's a mysterious stranger. He's a dude in a trench coat who's walking along mysteriously. And I don't know him. I don't know him, Hence, so he's sort of mysterious. He is strange to me. <laughs> um, also, this was one of the big talking points everyone had. Yes. There's a dog. <gasps> Yes, there is a dog. a dog. Yes. Everybody has been calling him dog meat. I don't necessarily agree with that. Right, because for you, dog meat has to be kind of a two-toned. Dog meat was a little bit more black and white versus just a straight German shepherd. So, but this is all sort of semantics. It's a dog. I think people are calling him dog meat as a shorthand. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see how he's actually 
involved in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, or if he's just your buddy, which actually would be totally fine. I mean, I, th I think buddy, I mean, if, if we're to take the trailer right. you know, straight, yeah, he's definitely your buddy. He's just, you know, come on, let's go, or, you know, that, that, yeah. that, that wonderful end to the trailer. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I do know that people have already had an emotional attachment to a yes. dog whose role in the game we don't even know, and it's just, please don't kill the dog. Please don't kill the dog. <laughs> Is this too much for us to ask? The internet demands you not kill dog meat slash mystery dog. And it's, it's important to point out that Fallout 3, you know, had dog meat. Uh -huh. And, you know, dogs are all over games these yes. days. But that, he, he's like the OD. Yes. He is the original dog. Yes. OD and I think, I think it's actually going to really help. I mean, we all know Fallout is very bleak. Um, and, you know, I think it's going to be nice to, you know, know that we're going to have a little bit of a companion with us. It's good to have a loyal friend at the end of the world. I've, I've always felt that, and clearly the game is going to demonstrate that as well. <laughs> yes. Now, the other cool thing about the trailer was that there were a lot of details in mm -hmm. it. And those details were, of course, really oriented at the fans who have played previous games and going to be able to pick out little references and little things that were in the previous games. Now, you know, there's 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 Nuka-Cola. Of course. You know, I know a lot of people may have spent a lot of time getting all special cans of Nuka-Cola <laughs> that were spread out all over who, the wasteland. Who, who would that be? The Adam? Peoples. The, the Peoples oh, did that. People I, I, was, the I was hearing from them. They were reporting back to me, you know, just working really hard and tirelessly yes. with their controllers trying to find all of that. Yes. <laughs> I have a feeling there will be things to find. I, I, I fear I'll be spending a lot of time. Again. Um, Mr. Handy was a nice feature. Yes. It was a nice little detail to put in there. And it was really cool to see Mr. Handy all shiny and fresh and new. That was something that I really liked. And of course, the Vault Boy statuettes. Yes. Which may also be littered around the wasteland that one will diligently look for in every single instance, even in that one instance where you can only get one particular one when it happens within the course of the story and you can never re-access it again. So maybe you have to go back to an earlier save to get it. Just theoretically. Just theoretically. Right. Um, and we should talk about, so you have a lot of Fallout 3 memories. Yeah, I do too. You can see. Um, as you can see, something that really has always resonated for me uh, in Fallout 3 was the first time that I actually went to Megaton. Mm -hmm. And what struck me, I think, were the characters and the people, because you expect them to be all sort of Mad Maxi raiders. Mm -hmm. And it just was really interesting to find cheery people and chipper people and crazy people and it was just you start to see that it's it's this whole really fleshed out world versus That's, this yeah, sort exactly. of monotone bleak everything's a raider everything's evil you know no, so I, mean, it's it's like, really I, cool. I don't know why it probably says a lot about me but it, yeah. you know as a childhood fantasy like the apocalypse stuff like Mad Max you really really resonated with yeah. me and it was when, when you get to Megaton it's yeah. that sudden realization that like the world is realized it is yeah. articulated and this thing that existed in my kind of childhood imagination is right there in front of me and I can almost reach out and sort of touch it and move yeah. around it and have a, an experience in Because it. even after the apocalypse, people are still people. You That's, know, yeah. they're still going to behave in that quirky, weird, colorful way. I do remember uh, Todd Howard came on X-Play yes. um, to show off Fallout 3, and it was sort of this demonstration of how, you know, how the game, like, you could really play it any way that you wanted. Like, you could go to Megaton, you could blow it up if you wanted to. And then as soon as the camera stopped rolling, he leans over to us and he's like, don't, don't blow up don't Megaton. Blow. I'm really curious how many people, at least on their first playthrough, <laughs> actually blew up Megaton. He's like, you can, but maybe <laughs> but you don't maybe, want maybe to. Maybe you don't want to. <laughs> it's a really nice place to go, visit, now that while you're demo, playing the game. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I wrote about it last year, yeah. and I, I really, that is such a fond memory. Yeah. A, because bloody mess was turned on. We yes. were live doing yes, the demo. We were. And I remember making a comment like, I, I, I kind of wonder what the lawyers might be thinking about it. And someone came over my ear and was like, oh, they are well aware. They didn't realize this is live. But my, my favorite part of it was at the end with the rocket launcher. Yeah. And he filled it with teddy bears and just starts within vats, taking out enemies with teddy bears. And it really is a fond and wonderful memory of both that game and, you know, and yes. that time. It's a special moment. All right, I yes. think it is safe to say that we are going to learn a lot more about Fallout 4 tonight. Yes, but the other big title we recently got a closer look at was Doom. Last year, a select few QuakeCon attendees managed to get a sneak peek at Doom being played live, but only those who were there got to see it. And I was there in Dallas, and I saw it. Don't brag. No, I was. It was cool. Okay, well, the rest of us are excited <laughs> to get our first glimpse tonight. And the big question for the fans is how it's going to capture the spirit of the original. And, and you can tell us this. Yes, I mean, it, 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 you, you really do see the qualities of the original yeah. Dooms in this. But it's, it's like everything gets turned up to 11. What a lot of you are going to see out there are some melee finishers that show an over-the-top violence that's sort of comical, it's exuberant. It's, it, it really is that kind of tone that, that you're used to. And it, it, at the end of the day, it really, you can see it's an homage to the original Doom that goes all the way back to 1995. And now we know you're fighting legions of demons, but sort of what sets it apart?
apart from other shooters, or what are gamers going to notice? It's fast. Okay. It's fast. And another thing to kind of keep an eye out for is notice how the player does not move back nearly as much as what you're accustomed to okay. in games that are sending out waves and waves of enemies. And it really, it's it, it's almost exhausting to watch. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like to play because it's just this sense of just it being very relentless, and you really notice you're making snap decisions. It's that kind of shooter where you can't stop and think. You need to just be so instinctual if you're going to survive. And you're changing weapons constantly, or there's, how are you? There's a lot of weapons that are good. There's it's, a it's lot doom. of weapons. <laughs> it's Doom. <laughs> so actually, just a few weeks ago, Bethesda revealed it. What I think we should call maybe a teensy snippet of the game, mostly to let everyone know that Doom would be revealed tonight. So let's take a look at that. All right. Um, can 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 we see that again? Yeah. How about one more time? One more time. I I, I just sneeze. Can we replay that? Yeah. Yeah, Good. I think okay. I got it. I got it. I think, I I think it. that, yeah, we've all kind of got the idea of what it is. Uh, now, we know this game is going to be beautiful. Yes. And violent. Yes. And this new teaser also clued us into the return of some classic characters. Yes, you mean the Revenant. Why yes. is he? Why is he screaming at me? He's excited. It's, it's nothing personal. He's not screaming at you. He's just an excited Revenant. Also, we can <laughs> confirm the super shotgun is back. This game would not be Doom without the super shotgun. And with that, you can shoot the Revenant in his screaming face. I look forward to doing Go. that. Uh, it has been uh, a big few weeks for Bethesda. Not only is their first ever showcase about to begin, and not only did they release that Doom teaser and a full trailer for Fallout 4, but they just launched the console version of Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. Now, that's their Elder Scrolls MMO. It's been out for a year on PC, but has just hit current gen consoles, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And speaking of online games, I have a feeling that we're going to see more of Battlecry 2. Of course, that is Bethesda's team based action game with some very beautiful and brutal brutal, excuse me, yes. PvP combat. It is beautiful. So you guys, a little bird has told me uh, that there will be some surprises, so make sure you continue to watch the stream and leave your comments and questions. We're going to be back for the post show where we'll answer some of your questions and interview all of the developers who are on stage. And stay tuned because we're going to have some giveaways yes. that you at home can win. What about me? Can I win? We're all winners. Just some of us are more winners than others, oh. Morgan. Now be sure to follow on Bethesda's official Twitter, at yes. Bethblog. Share your thoughts and questions using the hashtag BE3. If we pick your question, then you get the giveaway. All right, guys, the show is actually really about to begin. And so uh, we see Pete Hines over there. We're going to bring Pete? him over here. Come here. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. good, good. Obviously, you're probably doing well, too. This is your big special night. Yes. Is there anything for the people in the internet that can... Uh, that, that you can tell them? I, I don't think you guys are fully ready for what's about to happen, so buckle We're up. Very it's excited. Amazing. Get on stage. Good night. All right. I'm a gameplay programmer. I'm the art director. Principal game designer. Concept artist. Audio director and sound designer. At id Software. Arcane Studios. Tungle Game Lux. For Bethesda Game Studios. Battlecry Studios. Machine Games. Cinemax Online Studios. It's been here for about two and a half years. Six years. Two, three months now. Nine years. We all love video games. I've played games since I was a kid. It's actually hard to imagine getting paid for this sometimes. Knowing that we're making something really cool, that's what gets me up every day. We make the games that we want to play. I like getting players thinking. I love the chance to create. To try new ideas. To bring new monsters to life. To excite people. To build new worlds. To make something awesome. Something that people will love for the fun a sense of discovery the story something that'll inspire people make them laugh hopefully get their adrenaline pumping a little bit smile their face is just like oh my god scream and they go like this Ugh. or cheer it's why we do what we do i'm super excited about e3 it is go time if we're lucky if we're doing it right we have something special here our hearts are kind of on the line it's been a long journey <laughs> it's gonna be pretty cool now it's time to show you the whole world everyone what we're making we're ready for our close-up i'm so ready i'm crazy the question is are you are you are you ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm definitely ready i can't wait let's do this let's go it's finally time for the bethesda e3 showcase hit it hit it, hit it.
Ladies and gentlemen, Global Vice President of PR and Marketing for Bethesda Softworks, Pete Hines. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to Bethesda's first ever E3 showcase. I, ha I have to tell you that that video still gets me a little choked up because it represents the hundreds of people that I'm here on stage representing tonight, the talented folks from our studios all over the world who work hard every day towards a common goal, to make great games. We're all excited to welcome you here tonight to kick off E3. We're in this amazing venue, the Dolby Theater, you know, best known for the Oscars. On this very stage, the, some of the best names in entertainment have received the highest honor. We aren't here to hand out statues, but we are going to have a celebration of our own, complete with blood and guts and a bunch of stuff blowing up. I think, you're gonna, I think we're going to have a lot more fun than them. Thank you all for being here with us. We put this show on for you to show the whole world what we're up to and what's coming from Bethesda over the next year. There's also a lot of folks joining us on YouTube and Twitch right now. So hello to all of you, wherever you are in the world joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, welcome also to my colleagues from Bethesda and all of our studios who are here in attendance tonight. Thank you guys for being here as well. As well as all of our colleagues who couldn't be here and are watching online and then stayed up till the middle of the night in Europe. We have our friends down in Sydney who had a special party with the fans just to tune in and watch. So hello to all of them. Uh, welcome to all of our retail partners who are here members of the press, our supporters, friends, and last but not least, our fans. We truly believe we have the best fans in the world. They're loyal, they're smart, and they're passionate about games. They share our passion for great games. And that's what we're here to do tonight, to talk about games. So let's get right to it. Are you ready? I assume that some of you in the audience have heard of a game called Doom before? I thought you might have. In 1993, a small studio named id Software made a first-person shooter called Doom that forever changed gaming. First-person shooters became a phenomenon, Deathmatch was born, and Doom became a cultural icon. To this day, Doom is considered one of the most important and influential games in the history of our industry, and tonight, it is back with a new Doom. Built on the id Tech 6 engine, or as we like to call it internally, id Tech 666, <laughs> it has taken the first person shooter to a whole new level. To introduce the new Doom, please welcome executive producer at id Software, Marty Stratton. I've had the pleasure of working on id Games for a very long time, and I've been a fan of them even longer than that. So it's an honor for me to represent the amazing and talented team at id here tonight. Just like for many of you, Doom is a special part of each of our individual gaming histories, both personally and professionally. That's why from the beginning of this project, we've been inspired by the way those original Doom games made us feel when we played them. Although their premise was simple, they made us feel smart and fast and powerful. And at times, like we were part of something much larger than just that lone Marine beating back the forces of hell with a shotgun. But the foundation of any Doom experience, past or present, is unquestionably combat that's centered around three things. Badass demons, big effing guns. That's right and moving really, really fast. So as you now find yourself on the outskirts of a massive UAC research facility on Mars, you've been activated to do one thing, kill demons. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Doom.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Doom is certainly about more than just the single-player campaign experience. And now that you've seen the game's combat, let's talk about multiplayer. Yeah. Doom multiplayer is fast-paced, arena-style combat in locations ranging from UAC facilities on Mars to the depths of hell. You'll be challenged in exciting modes like Domination, Freeze Tag, and Clan Arena to annihilate your enemies using your own personal blend of skill, fast vertical movement, awesome guns, and very unique power-ups. Here's a sneak peek at Doom Multiplayer. Thank you again. We look forward to sharing a lot more on Doom multiplayer in the coming months. But as you've now seen, Doom's wide variety of guns, wild cast of demons, and fast movement provide the building blocks for hours of great entertainment in both single and multiplayer modes. But we weren't done. We wanted to provide more and allow our fans to do more. You see, traditionally, We've provided our tools to a community of players with the knowledge and ability to create additional content. And their work has inspired us. So with this Doom, we asked, what if every player, regardless of platform or past experience, had the ability to build and instantly share their own creations? Like this co-op experience, where the goal is to survive wave after wave of demons. Or this mode, where you kill demons to earn credit that you can spend on ammo or health or bigger guns. Or even this classic four-player deathmatch experience. What if the possibilities were only limited by your imagination? Tonight, we are proud to announce Doom Snap Map, a custom-designed, built-in gateway to an endless stream of Doom experiences created by you. At its core, SnapMap is about players never running out of fun and imaginative gameplay. It's an easy-to-use in-game tool with uncompromising depth and capability. Without any past experience or special expertise, any player can easily snap together and customize intricate maps. You can quickly add predefined or completely custom gameplay. You can even create or edit game logic to make new modes. When you're ready, press a single button to play or share that content instantly with friends or others around the world. For more than 20 years, the Doom community has been one of the most active and creative in gaming. Now, with Doom Snap Map, we're putting that power of creation in the hands of every player. And we can't wait to see all the amazing things you come up with next. Now, before I go, we thought you might want to see a bit more from our single player campaign. Yes? All right, terrific. So let's drop in on a little place our demons like to call home. Welcome to hell.
On behalf of everyone at id Software, we want to thank you so much for your support over the years. We can't wait to get Doom into your hands in the spring of 2016 on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Have a great night. If you would, another round of applause, please, for Marty Stratton and the folks at him. If you weren't awake before, you better be now. You heard Marty talk about uh, Doom Snap Map, a great example of how Bethesda and its studios give our fans the ability to create and share mod content regardless of platform. Supporting mods is just one of the ways Bethesda is pushing the boundaries of what is possible in games. Over the last year, we've been working on how to expand how gamers create and share that content to our communities, how they connect both to each other um, as well as to us. The result of that work is a new digital platform, and it's called BethesdaNet. This is a home for all things Bethesda. BethesdaNet will power features like Doom Snap Map that you just saw and is already being used to support the Elder Scrolls Online across every platform for millions of players. It will be at the heart of all of our games going forward and also integrate our websites into one seamless experience. You can find all the info you crave on BethesdaNet, including robust forums to talk about the games that you love, exclusive videos and articles, and access to games and new features. BethesdaNet builds on our commitment to developing and supporting great AAA quality games. In fact, it was that commitment to quality and innovation that inspired us to found Battlecry Studios and their upcoming game, Battlecry. Hi everyone, I'm Lucas Davis, Design Director at Battlecry Studios. Battlecry is an online action game with team-based combat and intense tactical warfare. Face off against opponents in the war zones and battle for the glory of your nation. Select players in Australia and New Zealand have already joined us in our alpha, and soon the rest of the world can join them in battle. Tonight we are pleased to announce that we are accepting worldwide signups for Battlecry's global beta at battlecrythegame.com. And sign up now before June 18th and you'll receive priority beta access as well as a special in-game reward. We look forward to seeing you in the war zone this fall. Until then, here's a look at how Battlecry has evolved over the last year and a sneak peek at our brand new warrior faction, the Han Republic. Battlecry is playable at E3 this week, so come by and check it out. Bonjour. Nous sommes très honorés d'être ici ce soir. Je suis Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. English, slowly, Raph. All right. Slowly. English. Sorry. Sorry. All right, good point. I said hi, everyone. Uh, we are very honored to be here tonight. I'm Rafael Colantonio. And I'm Harvey Smith. We're co-creative directors at Arcane Studios, the team that brought you Dishonored. <laughs> Thank you. Arcane was started in 99 with one mission, to create the special kind of games we're most passionate about. Games with highly crafted, detailed world where gameplay experience focuses on player choice and consequence. We have always wanted to create games that rely on simulation instead of scripted moments. 
We followed our passion to create our most ambitious game yet, Dishonored. In Dishonored, you play an assassin with supernatural powers, falsely accused of murder and seeking to set things right. Dishonored became known for its unique blend of first person, exploration and stealth, stylized art direction, and steampunk world. Uh, We'd like to say thank you to the millions of fans who played Dishonored. <laughs> On behalf of our entire team, I can tell you uh, your passion was deeply gratifying. You inspired us. And so the reason we're here tonight is that we're super excited about showing you what comes next from us. happened again. Someone's pulled the rug out from under you. An empire at your feet, and you've lost it all. Be honest, did you really deserve any of it? More important, what would you do to get it back? Careful, there's always a price to pay. What you decide will ripple across the years. Blood in the gutters and corruption on the wind. It'll be fun watching this unfold. What will you do with the power I've given you? How will you make your mark on this wretched world? In Dishonored 2, the Empire of the Isles is in jeopardy once more when an otherworldly usurper seizes the throne. You'll travel to Karnaka, a once dazzling coastal city on the southern edge of the world, and hunt down new adversaries as you alter the fate of the Empire. This time, you have the choice to play as Corvo Itano or Emily Caldwin, a new character. Both have their own unique sets of powers, their own weapons and gadgets. And of course, you can combine these things creatively to eliminate your targets as you see fit. You can play with weapons drawn, or you can play the entire game without killing anyone. We'll tell you more as soon as we can, but what we're here tonight to say is that Dishonored 2 is coming, and will be available for PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4. Thank you so much. All right. And uh, while you wait for the new game, we have more of the original Dishonored for you to enjoy. 
It is Dishonored Definitive Edition. It comes with all the original game plus all of the add-on content, and all of it has been graphically enhanced for Xbox One and PS4. So the Dishonored Definitive Edition will be available this fall. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the show. Hi everyone and good evening. Five days ago we launched the Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited for the PS4 and Xbox One consoles. For the first time in the franchise's award-winning history, console players all over the world are now able to experience an Elder Scrolls game with friends. We're pleased to see millions of people online enjoying the game, whether it's by themselves, with a group, or in massive battles. We're sorry we can't be with you in person tonight, but we need to be in the studio to support the recent launch. We're also working hard on adding even more content and new features to this already vast world. We're excited about what fans have to look forward to next, so here's a peek at what the team at ZeniMax Online Studios is bringing to Tamriel Unlimited this year. What can I say? I love games and I, every opportunity to play, I take advantage of. And with a tablet or a mobile device like this one, I can take games with me wherever I go, on the plane at my in-law's house or even at an important E3 showcase at the Dolby Theater. Um, people who know me know that I am a huge fan of strategy card games. I play them a lot. I have also worked on the Elder Scrolls series in some way or another for over a third of my life. So this next game is particularly exciting to me because it brings those two worlds together. Tonight, we are pleased to announce The Elder Scrolls Legends, a strategy card game that builds on the rich legacy of Skyrim and The Elder Scrolls Online and brings the world of The Elder Scrolls to a completely new genre. Here's a sneak peek. Past. Present. Future. The Elder Scrolls hold all of Tamriel's history. That which has transpired, and that which is yet to be. They speak of heroes, and their quests. Of challenges yet to be faced, and prophecies yet to be fulfilled. But they do not tell us your own. For your destiny is your own to craft. Will you fade into memory? Or will you carve your name into myth and 
join those who have become legends. The Elder Scrolls Legends will be free to play and available on PC and iPad later this year. We can't wait to share more details with you in the coming months. And whether you're a strategy card game fan like me or an Elder Scrolls fan also like me or neither, uh, we think Legends is something you'll definitely want to check out. Uh, and with that, I am sorry to say that we have come to the end of our showcase. Um, what? <laughs> Did I, we, we, did, we did Doom, right? We did Battle Cry and... <laughs> we did say something about that being here. My bad, I forgot. We do have one more presentation. It is from Bethesda Game Studios. And... And actually, we are all here because of this next game. Because about a year ago, I had the idea to do this showcase, and I went to this gentleman, and I said, hey, instead of having to do a demo every hour, all three days of E3, what if I figured out a way for you to do just one demo? And he, of course, instantly said, yes, please. Now, I don't think he knew that he was getting, uh, you know, what he was getting into, that we would all end up being here, streaming this live all over the world, but Hey, promise is a promise. He said he would do it. So here we all are, ready and waiting for his one demo of this E3. His studio creates games that have come to define open world gaming, and they are currently the holders of three consecutive video game of the years with Skyrim, Fallout 3, and Oblivion, each a consensus game of the year winner. Those games in the studio have been led by someone who should need no introduction, but I'm giving him one anyway. Please give a warm welcome to the game director of Bethesda Game Studios and my very good friend, Todd Howard. This is great. Look at this. You all came. This is amazing. I need to let me take this in. Holy crap. You know, when I first started at Bethesda 21 years ago, yes, believe it or not, uh, there, there was no E3. There was none of this. You remember that? We had CES in Vegas, and the video games weren't even in the main building. They were in, like, an ancillary tent with the porn. <laughs> it's not, I'm not kidding. Uh, Blizzard's booth was closer, for the record. Um, <laughs> But now, now look at us, look at all of you here, look at video games, everybody online uh, watching this. Uh, this is how you spend a quiet Sunday evening, I guess. Um, and you do this because games are important to all of us here. And I think we can all agree that tonight starts a week with E3 that is the world's best week of entertainment ever. Because entertainment is an essential part of our lives. And games can do things that nothing else in entertainment can. They can transport you to new worlds. They can give you the true wonder of discovery and often the pride of accomplishing something yourself in a game. It's a wonderful moment. And in the world of entertainment, there are very few things as good as Fallout. <laughs> you know, we started, we've worked on Fallout for over 10 years now, and we started designing this one actually right after Fallout 3 in 2009. Um, we were busy with the Skyrim game. Uh, but for the last four years, we have been working very, very hard to create something really special. And we've done a lot. And tonight, we are going to show you a lot. So. 
And it all starts with an obsession to detail. Our artists concept every button, every blinky light, not just on one terminal, on all of them. Because it's our belief that it's all of these small details coming together that form a much, much larger whole. And that last image is really important because one of the great things about Fallout is the world that existed before the bombs fell. And that is where our game starts. <laughs> On a beautiful Saturday morning with the threat of nuclear war looming. You're going to knock him dead at the Veterans Hall tonight, hon. You think? Absolutely. Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. And this is where you create your character. By simply selecting part of the face and sculpting. Such a cute nose. What do you think, huh? Beard or no beard? We're going to speed up time here and show you just how easy and powerful this is to create all new characters by just sculpting and making changes wherever you want in the face. No series of sliders. Hey, my turn, big guy. And of course, you can play as a female. Whoever you leave the menu as is who you'll play. And this is an entirely dynamic system. It's the same system we use to create all of the game's NPCs. We even generate a baby based on the couple you make. Ah, good morning, sir. Your coffee, 173.5 degree Fahrenheit. Rule to perfection. Thanks, Kazuo. Nuka Cola, ice cold. Sugar bombs, 100% daily value of sugar. Good morning, Voltec calling. Voltec, remind me again. Why we're about you, sir, and helping secure your future. You see, vault is the foremost builder of state-of-the-art underground fallout shelters. Vaults, if you will. But there's room for my entire family, right? Of course, of course. Minus your robot, naturally. 
In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Thanks again. Hey, it's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? Mr. Howard, Sean has been changed, but he absolutely refuses to calm down. You heard Codsworth say my name. That isn't for the demo. We actually have recorded around a thousand of the most popular names for him to say. How are the two most important men in my life doing? Spin the mobile a bit. He loves that. Now, we're not going to be spoiling or talking about the game's story tonight, but you do survive and get lowered into the vault. Events transpire, but you then emerge 200 years later as the sole survivor of Vault 111. This is an enormous dynamic world where you can create any kind of character you want, go where you want, and do whatever you want. Player freedom remains our absolute number one goal. This is running on a next generation version of our creation engine features full physical-based rendering, as well as dynamic volumetric lighting. is dynamic. It is not a mode you're locked into. You can play it in first person, you can play it in third person, you can walk away whenever you want, you can shoot him in the face if you want. Okay, then. Let's stick together. Hey, head over there. And yes, you can give the dog commands by simply pointing at things in the environment and activating them. It's all contextual. Grab that. Ready? 
Ready to get back out there? It is from here that you'll explore the most ambitious and detailed game world that we have ever made, culminating in the massive ruins of downtown Boston. Now to the cool stuff. <laughs> this is a, a very old photo from the future, um, of course, of the invention of the very first Pip-Boy, uh, which is, will become, the world's uh, greatest smartwatch due to its power and portability. Um, <laughs> and of course, we have a new one in Fallout 4. This is where you find it when you leave the vault. Now you do spend a lot of time in our games looking at your stats, your items, and more. So we put a lot of emphasis on making this entertaining, but also making it come alive on the screen. Your various items. We do have a layered armor system now. There are holotapes you can listen to, and some of these are even game tapes. like all kinds of games. Yeah, we, we just, you know, the Pip-Boy is an important part of Fallout and we love it so much. We made a real one. Uh, so uh, this comes with our collector's edition. Um, so it is the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy edition and yes, you can put your phone in it. And yes, we made an app for it. So it, 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 it works with the game. And yes, it's a second screen experience. And usually, I find second screen experiences, they're generally just stupid gimmicks. Um, but like, as far as stupid gimmicks goes, I assure it's the best fucking one I have ever seen. It is awesome. It is. Um, it is. Here, I, I'm going to show it to you in action. It works. It, it actually works perfectly. Um, it's the same code that we use on the Pip-Boy running on the app. Works on any platform on your local Wi-Fi, Xbox One, PS4, PC. Uh, 
of course, if you don't get the Pip-Boy edition, it'll obviously still work on your smartphone or tablet. Um, it's going to be iOS and Android, and it'll come out when the game comes out. But we've also done something else for your smartphone and your tablets, a totally new game. I know. <laughs> we, we're busy. We do stuff. Um, back in 2007, we were making Fallout 3, and the iPhone came out, and we just fell in love with it. And we played games on it all the time. And we kept talking about making our own game uh, for it, a separate game from what we would usually normally do. Uh, we had a lot of ideas. We kept coming back to this one that we felt would be perfect on a touch screen and that would be no better anywhere else. So we decided to do it, uh, and here it is. It is called Fallout Shelter. And in it, you get to make your own vault. And you are the overseer controlling everything. Uh, you control uh, the people in the vault. It's your job to keep them productive and happy. This is inspired by games, the other games we love, going back 30 years to little computer people. You'll see inspirations, obviously, from XCOM, SimCity, FTL, things that we really, really like. Each dweller has full stats. They all level up. There are items, you can give them new outfits, weapons, which they'll need when you send them off into the wasteland. Um, so they'll head off into the wasteland and they'll have adventures and get stuff. This is actually inspired by an odd little RPG called Progress Quest. If you've never, look, look it up, it's really cute. Uh, resources are important, having the right balance of food, water, and power. There are lots of different rooms you can build, uh, ones that give you resources. Some of them train people. They train your dwellers' stats. The bar, of course, trains charisma. <laughs> Classroom does intelligence. There are children. More on that in a bit. And you do get rewarded with lunch boxes full of random loot. Accidents can happen, fires can break out, uh, rat roach attacks, uh, attacks, raiders can attack. And of course, the, the best way to get new dwellers is the old, the old fashioned way. It raises their happiness when they go in the room. And of course, as overseer, you get to name all the babies. Uh, and that is Fallout Shelter. Now, this game is going to be free, but don't worry, there, there are no paywall timers. You don't need an internet connection. Uh, you, you build something, it's instantly built. Um, Again, no internet connection. You can play it wherever you want. Um, we do let you buy more lunch boxes if you want more random loot, but the whole goal of this game was to do something we'd really want to play on our phones, something that made us smile and had you know, more depth than other things we were seeing. But what's been especially exciting about this game is for us to finally work with uh, some great folks at Apple. And what's even more exciting is that this game is coming out on the App Store tonight. So, uh, yeah, no, no soft launch. <laughs> it's uh, going to start rolling worldwide after the showcase this evening. I hope you check it out. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised.
But we're not done talking about Fallout 4 yet. Yes! So back to the, the big one. Uh, you know, we love building stuff in our games. Um, and if you think about building and crafting, Fallout is kind of the perfect world to do all of that in. Um, so like many things, we have gone completely overboard. And here's how it works in the game. We're allowing your character, while playing, to rebuild. And it works like this. You can scrap items in the world for materials and then use those materials to build the way you want. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works in real time. Rip it apart and build the way you want. Like the rest of the game, this is about making it your own experience. We want you to build and decorate and, and make yourself really um, a place you want to live in. A new home uh, for yourself and your best friend, of course. As your settlement grows, people will arrive, including certain traders. They have some of the best items in the game. Uh, for these people, you will need to, you can plant food, water, and even uh, power generators. All right, so the generators will power things through switches that require power, lights and other items. And then you run wires that connect them all, and it, again, it, it just works. You can also build your own terminals that hook to this power grid, and then you can control the various things and tweak them that the power lines are connected to. This includes things like turrets. Because you do want to build defenses uh, because your settlements can and will get attacked uh, by raiders. So it's fun to build up something yourself in the game that usually you'll find that, that we have built for you. Um, and there are many large sites in the game world where we allow you to build. And you can even run Brahmin caravans between your settlements. Uh, and keep in mind, like most things we do, uh, this is an optional part of the game that you can do if you want to. It's just one part of a huge game, but it's really really great for Fallout. We just absolutely love this feature. And this crafting system carries over to other things in the world. So let's say you want to build this scope. And the game will tell you you need these components. And those components are found in all of the items in the world. So you could decide to build this scope out of these, you know, say the microscope, a toy car, or these, you know, duct tape, an alarm clock and such. So we like to fill our worlds with thousands of items that you can interact with, and now all of them have purpose. And here's what it looks like in the game. We do have over 50 base weapons and over 700 modifications for those weapons. So you could take a basic, you know, a laser pistol from Fallout, just one of the base weapons, and then modify that and turn it into something completely new.
and you can even modify your own power armor. We've, we've spent a lot of time on all the weapons and the armor because we have focused heavily from day one to make the combat in this game feel great. And feel great no matter how you played it. You want to play it full on first person, you can play it in third person, or you can use VATS, which now gives you more control to slow down time and choose your shots. You know, there's, there's a lot of great things uh, that this game does, but I tell you, you can be experiencing, you know, a quiet moment in the game with your dog and the right song comes on your Pip-Boy and the action breaks out and you're reminded just how fun and special a Fallout game can be. Ready to fuck some shit up? Got a dog, baby. I love her so. Nothing else like her anywhere you go. A man she Anything but tall, regular type size, I had a bomb. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been obviously a really special project for everybody in the team. Many of them are here in the house tonight. Can you guys wave? Give a big hand. Uh, you know, our fans really are the greatest in the world. I know many of you are here tonight and I want to let you know just how important it is to us and we know we have a responsibility to do this game right, and your love and support of Fallout have pushed us to make this our best work. Um, and we really appreciate everybody's patience. You know, we didn't say anything for years in this game while everybody waited. Um, and we don't want you to wait too much longer. So we're happy to say Fallout 4 is coming out November 10th this year. Thanks again, everybody. I really, really, we really hope you love the game. Thanks again. Not that I should have.
have to ask, but I can, can I please get another round of applause for that man? That boy knows how to make a game and give a demo. Uh, just a reminder, you don't need to wait to get your Fallout fixed till this fall. Uh, Fallout Shelter will be available right after the showcase is over. You can find a direct link to it on our blog. We'll also be putting it out over all of our social media channels, so we hope you'll take a moment to download it and give it a try. We think you guys will like it. And now we really have come to the end of the show. Um, you just got to look at what is coming from Bethesda in the next year, and there's still more to come from our other studios. We are always trying to push the boundaries of what players can expect from our games wherever they play them, and we think this lineup has something for everyone. From The Elder Scrolls to Fallout, from Doom to Dishonored, we hope these are the games that people will be talking about and playing for years to come. Before we wrap up, one more thing. We've created something special to commemorate our first showcase and to thank all of you for helping us make it such a big success. Take a look. Where is he? Come on out. It's okay. You can, you can bring your friends out. Come on, guys. There they are. So you can pick up your set of figures uh, on the way out tonight. I gotta be honest, I, I feel like that's a mixed reaction. If you don't want it, it's fine. You can just leave it there. <laughs> now, for those of you at home on Twitch, do not despair. We did set aside some of these for you guys. We are going to be giving them away on the post show with Adam and Morgan, so stay tuned to find out how you can win of one of these. Also on the post show, you'll get more details about everything you heard tonight, plus exclusive conversations and interviews with Marty, Todd, Roth, and Harvey, so stay tuned. Okay. That's it, folks. We hope you enjoyed our first ever E3 showcase. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. There you have it. Doom, The Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited, Dishonored 2, Elder Scrolls Legends, and Fallout 4. And we cannot forget about Fallout Shelter. No. Now, we hope you enjoyed the Bethesda E3 showcase as much as we did. Yes, the event has just concluded, and we are backstage at the Dolby Theater here in Los Angeles to speak to the developers behind the big games that were just unveiled. And we're also going to be answering some of your questions from Twitter. Make sure to follow along throughout E3 for updates on these games by following Beth Blog on Twitter and using the hashtag BE3. We even have a cool giveaway for anyone whose questions let's see, let's see, let's get see. answered. You just saw it right there on the show. Oh. It's these absolutely uniquely painted. Yes. Now this is something that you're only going to be able to get here or if you ask a question that we answer on the show. Yes. So. And um, I'm kind of salivating over them myself. They're really, so, uh, they're really cool. There's some very special treats um, here. Alright guys, we're going to kick things off with one of the all-time classics that is back in a big way. We've known that Doom has been in the works, but tonight the whole world finally saw it unveiled in all of its brutal glory. Now along with everything they showed on stage, I'm told we even have a brand new trailer that we're de debuting right yes. here in the post show. So let's take a quick look.
us is executive producer at id software marty stratton welcome thank you so much marty congratulations i think it's it's fair to say the audience definitely responded to what they saw out there they from loved. Doom. It was amazing. I mean, I assume this must be a big moment, not just for you, but for everyone at it. Absolutely. I mean, we have such a, a fantastic team at it. I, I, I was telling somebody on the way over here, I wish they all could have stood up there and watched the faces. There's, there's not a lot of opportunities where you get to actually watch the faces of 3,000 people as they're, as they're watching what you've created. And it was just, it was electric. It was so much fun. It was a brutal demo. Yes. Yes. Which, of course. Uh, it's Doom. It, which is Doom. Um, and so you actually got to unveil it to the entire world. I mean, that must have been a big thrill. It really was. You know, we did our sneak peek last year at QuakeCon. Uh, you were Which there. I know Adam yes, got to see I it. absolutely. I, I enjoyed it then. I enjoyed it now. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So, so that was a lot of fun because we gave them a, a sneak peek. But being able to to, to show the world what, what we've been working on for for a while now, um, and and you know, share that excitement was it's 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 the biggest thrill uh, probably of my career. And uh, Doom, as, as you pointed out, and I think as, as many people know, it's been around for 20 years. Yeah. And it really established what we know as the first person shooter genre in gaming. Yes. But obviously that genre has changed over the years, not just in your hands, but in the hands of many, many studios out there. But what are those essential elements of Doom that have to be there for the new Doom? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, we, I, I talked about it on stage. You know, you, you come back to the, to, the, to the fundamentals. It's about speed, it's about awesome guns, and it's about killing demons, you know? When, when you're doing those things, um, it, it, it makes a very fun game. But, you know, Doom is, is it's kind of like Todd, Todd said at the end of his presentation, we take that commitment to the fans seriously. Everybody has a very special experience that they've had with, with Doom, you know, over the course of 20 years. And, uh, you know, we, we take that, as an entire team, we take that commitment very seriously. So, uh, we boil it down to a few things that are kind of the essence of it, but, man, going into the details, whether it's the characters, the guns, or the way the combat feels, the spaces that we create, every single thing we do really has to kind of reflect that essence of Doom. You know, uh, sort of the, speaking of the essence, things were <laughs> moving very, very quickly. Yes. So the, the game is, is really about speed for the average player who's going to be playing it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we, try to, we try to ramp players up as, through, the, through the course of the game. The, the first level that people saw was, was actually pretty early in the game, like the, the second area. So it's, it's um, you know, a little bit more approachable. And then that, that hell level is, is about halfway through. So it gets a little bit more chaotic. Um, you're using your speed and your movement quite a bit. You noticed a, a double jump mechanic that we have and, and a mantle it happens really fast, uh, just like you would expect from, from Doom movement. Um, and of course, you can carry all your weapons with you. You probably noticed the, the weapon wheel with the slow-mo. Um, we were looking for a way for you to be able to, to have that massive pack of guns, but able to access them really, really quickly with the controller. So, and you don't ever, you don't ever stop the game. You just slow it down. Just slow so it down. Can't really yeah. like sit in your wheel. Still and no, know what you want. You still need to know what's happening, right? <laughs> yeah, you'll still, you'll still take a fireball in the head once in a while. So, um, I, I kind of noticed there are very few objects that seem to be at waist height. You're not going into cover behind them, and, uh, and, and more importantly, I talked about this when I saw it at QuakeCon. You're not moving back much, which is also very. It, it, it's a common motif for a lot of games where there's a lot of enemies. Are we going to see any of that? in the course of this doom? No, not really. I mean, we, we really build our spaces. We, we call them combat arenas. We think of it a lot like playing a multiplayer game, like an arena multiplayer game. We enter these big combat spaces. We give you lots of room to move around. We let you use your speed. But we're really not trying to drive the player into combat m much at all. We, we started uh, kind of this, this, this doom with the idea of what we called push forward combat. And we, we didn't want the player to feel on their heels at all. We didn't, you know, we're not letting you regenerate your health when you hide. Um, you actually get health from killing enemies, so you're down to one health. You want to kill that enemy and run over there and get that get that health that he drops. You, you, so. you have to play the game. You to be able have to keep to playing have, the yeah, game. You have to play the game, and that's that's the fun. I mean, Doom is about killing demons and playing the game. It's it's there's almost a uh, kind of a just a juvenile fun to to the way it works and the way our enemies work and the way the guns work, and it all just it becomes this kind of ballet of combat that, uh, that is really fun. We, we use the term at the office a lot. Um, uh, you're like Bruce Lee on a skateboard with a shotgun. Um, and that's that's kind of, you know, we almost have like these skate parks that players kind of can, can jump through and run through and really use their speed and their mobility uh, to their advantage, just just like the, the, the original Dooms. And, and, and with this idea of trying to always go forward, is that offering you guys a new way to sort of rethink level design or sort of liberate you from certain, I think, concepts that, that, that are around level design? Yeah, I, I think 
think you know our designers. Uh, you know, they're they're gr they're a great group, and they're they're very also inspired by Doom. The the way that the way that you create space when you're when you're moving fast. We again, we we kind of use the thing: if if you're going to make me a Ferrari, don't put me in a parking garage to to let me drive around. You know, give me an open track, give me space to 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 move around and and really show off my performance. So our designers take that seriously. We we um, again, we we kind of design the game in in these. Uh, Kind of these arena spaces connected with areas that you can go and explore for you know different. Uh, you saw some weapon mods and 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 other little goodies, bigger health and and a bunch of other stuff that we'll we'll probably talk about much more down <laughs> the road. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a it, again it's 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 all very much inspired by the way that uh, the way D Doom Doom felt. You know, you got out there and you just you ran and you moved forward and you and you cleaned house. With the weapons, which we should definitely talk mm -hmm. about. I mean, Doom is definitely all about weapons. Um, what kind of attention did you pay to the look, the feel, the history of them? You know, really everything. I mean, we we um, again, it's 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 a it's an attention to detail and it's a respect for the franchise. You know, I, I have to give our our art director Hugo Martin a lot of credit, um, and and our amazing art team. When you when you look at the weapons, when you look at the characters, for that matter. Um, you know, you see these guys when they're doing the concepts for them or the models for them. Oftentimes, they have the original up, and then the concept for the new enemy. And it's it's always about you know kind of what what was great about that original character, and then how do we modernize it? How do we make it feel fresh and new? Um, and the guys are just they're just so talented. We have such a great team. Um, Got to give all the all the credit to them. And and uh, and it goes into into every detail. The 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 teaser that we released, and and even the the beginning of the trailer shows these guns up super close and that is not CG I mean those are that's how the guns look if you you know if you pull the camera away our, our trailer company did a great job and they just go in with the with the camera and go in really close on them so every detail is meticulously rendered and and uh, we're using a brand new rendering engine that's that's fantastic so every detail is covered in, in everything we do and I'm glad that you said that because there had been some questions on on Twitter whether or not that was actually in game or whether yes. or not that which is a surprising question I uh, yeah. think, for the content but I mean I think it really is a testament to the way the game looks Absolutely, and and we 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 always want to show everything we can uh, in engine, and and again we've we've uh, we've developed an entirely new rendering engine uh, that's that's built specifically for Doom, uh, very dynamic, very beautiful, allows us to get a lot of color, a lot of smoke, um, you know, reflections. It's a it's a physically based renderer, um, you know, dynamic lighting. It's it's a, it's a big step away from from what we had uh, with with Id Tech Five. Great great engine in in and of itself, but uh, really this is custom built for uh, for Doom. Um, and you know. It's since we are talking about the technical, one of the big questions that has been out there is, you know, you've probably heard it many times, it's a shooter. Uh, what is the the frame rate that, the, that, that you guys are aiming for? The, the what? The frame rate. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, let's, <laughs> 1080p, 60 frames a second. We, I, don't think, I don't think we've ever done a game less than, about to than say, you 60 frames. You guys are in it. Yeah, you have certain absolutely. goals for, yeah. for what you do. And, and our program, I mean, our, our technical team is just is fantastic. You know, we, we, uh, uh, we, we, we aim high and, and they always deliver. So uh, they're they're going to deliver again. Now, so the violence in the in the demo, it's it's uh, exuberant. I think was the word that you used. Over and I think the top. over the top. I think that's an, it's a nice way to yeah. uh, it's a nice way to put it. Have we seen the top in this demo? Uh, I don't know. We, we probably <laughs> hit, we probably still have some surprises Get some left. Tricks up but your uh, but it's you know it's 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 taking again even even like if you saw the 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 Mancubus death. Our animation mm -hmm. team kind of came with this idea of like those classic deaths of the enemies. You know they they the Mancubus when he dies he kind of falls apart in this in this puddle of a few blood pixels are falling out of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so what they did again is they took that essence and they recreated it in in our new engine. So you'll see a lot more of that kind of thing. And and of course the chainsaw does does a, a plenty good bit of damage as well. I mean. Is there just a collection of demented minds? It's like go in the room and come, <laughs> come, up come out with some really yeah. interesting ideas. It's, it's actually—I I always say it's one of the best things of, of working in, in games and, and even working at id. Like we can have a meeting about how we're going to rip the arms off of a zombie and beat him to death with them, or, or have your own arms ripped <laughs> off. That—that that actually is a—that is a real thing that happens in the game. When that revenant attacks you and, and rips your arms off, that's one of uh, kind of the player deaths that, that we have. I have a whole a feeling collection I'm see a lot of, of that. I probably yes. will. Yes. Also, um, it is a game of skill. So. Yes. Uh, how do the um, the finishing moves that the player was able to execute. How does that mechanic work? An another great uh, contribution from our animation team. You know, we, we, we kind of have a culture it where any ideas is is can come from anywhere, and and you know we that was a, that was one of the very first things that we started with 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 this Doom. Uh, again, when you go into this push forward combat, you end up in these close quarters situations a lot where you get really close to an enemy and we wanted a way to kind of finish these encounters very quickly, um, very you know. Uh, 
very doom, and uh, and of course with with the with the level of the violence that that people would expect. So um, they are a, it's a totally dynamic uh, kind of contextual system. When you approach an enemy that's in this uh, what we call kind of a, a staggered state, uh, he's reached a certain level of damage. Uh, based on kind of where you're looking, it will it will pick one of these many animations and, and play it out. And again, it, it allows you to kind of be your own fight choreographer in, in, the, in the middle of these combat arenas. And it's just, it's, it's the most addictive part of the game. You, you, you look at it and you're like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. But when you're playing the game, it's absolutely, it's like, it's like a hit of crack every time you do it, it's funny. <laughs> so we did not just see the single player tonight, we actually did see the multiplayer yes. as well. A um, little it's, sneak peek. It was, a, it was a sneak peek, it wasn't as much as the single player, but I feel like it gave the player sort of a good idea of, absolutely. of what it was going to be like. So what, what are your, what's your thinking going into the multiplayer? Well, you know, it's, we're, we're kind of going back to, to what we feel like we do really well, which is that fast-paced ar arena-style combat. It's kind of, uh, you know, most people who would look at it would probably call it a, a mix between a Doom and a and a quake style of style of play. Um, you did see that uh, you, you, there's a um, there's these power ups um, that. Uh, okay, so guys, yeah, I, we need to did talk I about see someone turn into a demon? You did. It, yes. was, it was fast, and <laughs> yep. I wanted to read it that way. Yep. You can say okay, a absolutely. Good. It's kind of like a, a, a modern version of quad damage, I guess you you would say, a, a very elaborate version of that. Um, so there is a kind of a demon rune in the world that. Uh, Comes, you know, comes into play. Players fight around it, and then you can pick it up, and you do turn into to one of a few uh, different demons. So, and and you you wreck. <laughs> it's I, fun. I'm I, I, I'm almost embarrassed asking you this because you guys are id, and when it comes to multiplayer, you know a lot. But balancing obviously is a key element to make the game fun. Sure. What are those important tenets of balance that you're looking for in Doom multiplayer? You know, it's it's about um, with with this kind of game, it's about uh, every player being able to to start off with uh, with a full, you know. Not being hindered from the beginning. You, you, we're, we're trying to focus on on you don't you don't kind of enter the world in a in a depleted state. So you start out with some some good weapons and you and you're you're straight into combat. Um, you know, balancing the demon is is uh, is a challenge and and it's a lot of fun. Um, we we play the game in the office constantly. We have a, a running tournament um, and uh, and it, and it's a lot of focus test. So we're st we're still in the process of developing, but uh, but I think the I think the balance is going to work out great. Um, we should talk about Snap Maps because this was something that got a lot of cheers and attention from yeah. the crowd. Um, how difficult is it to make your own map? Like, what consoles can you make it on? How deep does it go? It's it's cross-platform. You can do it. It's built into the game right from the start, and uh, and it's it's actually a, a kind of a two-component piece. You, there's a there's a content. Uh, almost hub, if you will. Uh, if you're a player who just wants to go and find the stuff that everybody else is making, you can go and it's play it and rate it and upvote it, downvote it, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then you also have this, this in-game tool. And I will tell you, uh, I, I did not... Uh, my background is not in level design or, or necessarily using our tools, and I love this thing. It is the most, it, it's, it's the most engaging, fun thing to do, to sit down and, and snap together your level, add this gameplay. It's, it's, you, can, you can add um, pieces of gameplay that are kind of pre-built for you and, and that, that almost take over, like add a wave battle. And it's as easy as placing a wave battle in the world. Or you can take that wave battle and break it out and completely customize it. You can pull uh, pieces together. You can set up little scripting. It's it's really it's it's almost. I'm anxious to, to to do a really detailed presentation on it because it's so deep and it's so easy to use. And and I really think everybody's going to find a kind of find a creative avenue through this. Um, and, 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 I, I think you did speak to this, but just to clarify, um, is it just multiplayer? Is there single player? Is there co-op? Everything. You you can make whatever you want in Snap Map. You can, can you make, make the a, original Doom? You could try. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the modules themselves are, are snapped together, kind of like uh, Lego pieces, and then uh, and then you just go to town, building your own uh, gameplay in the middle of it. And you can you can create a co-op experience, two player co-op, four player. You can make a single player game. You can make that classic deathmatch that you saw there. Um, it's it's, it's really a very open-ended tool, um, and, and like I said, I mean, we're, we're really anxious to see what, what players come up with. People have already been creating some cool stuff in the office. Um, I would like to ask a question from social media, okay. from Twitter. Uh, this is from at underscore Aiden underscore B underscore. Um, <laughs> hey, I can pronounce this one. I'm happy. Exactly how many types of returning demons can I expect to be blasting in the face 
in Doom, depending on how good of a shot he is. Yeah, I, I don't want to give our entire roster. We, we gave away a lot tonight. We showed it was, it a lot. It was pretty tonight. generous, yes, I have to say. Yes, yeah, so I can confirm everything that you saw. And, and there's a little glimpses <laughs> of a few things in there that were that were nice little teases, I think. Like yeah. you saw the you saw the specter there in hell when when he was kind of shimmery and then and then got killed and and and, and popped into the the pinky. Um, so uh, so watch it closely and you'll you'll see there. There's actually even the, uh, one that's kind of hidden in the background that uh, you, you players might look. So there's for. an Easter egg there, out there. Exactly. Yes. You got to do a little work. Um, all right. So thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank, um, thank you. So much, we cannot Marty. wait to find out more. We need platforms. When can we get to get our hands on it? I'm sure that's what everyone's asking. Yep. Absolutely. So all the you know PS4, Xbox One, and PC, um, and we're going to be releasing next spring. So super right. exciting time for us to to be on the brink. Well. Marty, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. I right. really appreciate it. <laughs> All right, another great reveal was Dishonored 2, which debuted with an amazing trailer. Let's take another look at Dishonored 2. It's happened again. Someone's pulled the rug out from under you. An empire at your feet and you've lost it all. Be honest, did you really deserve any of it? More important, what would you do to get it back? Careful, there's always a price to pay. What you decide will ripple across the years. Blood in the gutters and corruption on the wind. It'll be fun watching this unfold. What will you do with the power I've given you? How will you make your mark on this wretched world? Accident. Everything is in motion. All of it has led you to this exact second in time. In 2012, Arcane Studios got everyone's attention with their critically acclaimed title, Dishonored. It focused on player's choice, it was a unique story about a supernatural assassin where players could complete the story through non-lethal means. It was also my game of the year of 2012. Players, not me, but uh, other people. Uh, joining us now to talk about Dishonored 2, as well as Dishonored Definitive Edition, is Raph Colantonio and Harvey Smith, co-creative directors at Arcane Studios. Welcome to both of you. How does it feel to finally reveal what you guys have been working on? Well, it's been uh, a while now, so of course, <laughs> as usual, I think it's the same for every developers, you know, when you've been working like this for a while and you're very excited, but also, uh, you know, worried about what people are going to think, and uh, the reception was great, I think. 
Yeah, it's it's a relief as much as it's anything else. We, you know, it's hard to keep secrets, and <laughs> as, as you might have noticed. Yes. And uh, so it uh, it feels great. Um, you know, it's fun. obviously in anticipation and hope for this. I played through the original Dishonored again, and I just love that world that you created. Um, I assume it must be a lot of fun for you guys to go back to that and really expand on it. Obviously, you know, it's still the same world, but it's not just you know Dunwall. It's there's 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 more that you're exploring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, everybody says this, all the developers say this, but it's really true in our case that like we have this big team of multiple pieces that work together. Um, our lead, our lead architect, Damien Laurent, does a lot for the world. Our tech group is very powerful. Our art director, Sebastian Maton, our level design director. Level design is a huge component of these games. Of so course. all of these people yeah. are like working together uh, with me and Raf on, on, on the games. And it's just like all the pieces. Uh, and it, it was gratifying to come back to the world for sure. Like, you know, we, we know Dunwall very well as a city and we mapped out our empire and we did lots of Lots of like background stuff that uh, were details that didn't come up in the first game, but they're just there. You feel them, and so we we exploited some of those for the new game. Oh, yeah. obviously, and, 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 and just to check, uh, you you did mention where this game takes place, or at least where we saw in the trailer. If you could elaborate just a touch on that. Yeah, the Empire of the Isles is four nation states uh, under uh, the Empress, and uh, the southernmost state is Circonos, and the capital of Circonos is Karnaka. It's the southernmost city in our Empire chain. And there has been references to it a little bit, like here and there, right? Even in the DLC, we had po posters that said, like, Karnaka needs workers because there's a big silver mine there, you know. So, yeah, we, we alluded to it all the time. And, of course, the biggest surprise in the trailer yes. was who we saw. It was not Corvo. So what can you tell us about this character? Well, uh, Emily Caldwin, the... The heir of the of uh, the throne on the, in the first game. Uh, Fifteen years later, we thought that would be uh, ideal to play her, since uh, uh, you know she was a key character in the first in the first game. And also, we always think that it's a good thing to be able to play uh, both genders in the game. And so that was. I uh, agree with that. <laughs> everything worked out <laughs> together, and it uh, it played well for us in this case. Yeah, we're, we're very excited about the fact that you can play Corvo as well. We want to revisit that character, deepen him, extend his powers a little bit, you know. Circonus uh, is where he's from, so he's going home. But all along, honestly, our energy was behind Emily. Like from day one, when we first started, uh, we were wrapping up the, the first game and starting to think about the DLC and we were starting to think about the new game. There was just a kind of energy behind Emily. And it, it's, there's something special in the first game where you go out on these missions and either you're ghost-like or you do this dark, violent stuff. And then you come back and you see the drawings Emily's made and she's either made like father figure, peaceful kind of drawings or she's like black crayon, <laughs> like, you know, depending on how you played. And so there was just kind of a, she's kind of a special character to us, I guess. Yeah, and the further thing, we, I mean, we don't know how much the players on this, uh, all of them got the, the message that she was, uh, you know, related to, uh, to Okay, yeah. yes. <laughs> you, you, you had to find the secret room. And, and yes, once again, I just played this. I just played the original Dishonored, but you really get the sense when you play the recording and you read some of the messages in that secret room in the second to last level. Um, the trailer makes a very strong case for wanting to play Emily. Yes. Um, obviously, we saw some stuff there that would imply she has distinct powers. If you could kind of explain how she plays differently from what we already know of Corvo. Well, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we see Emily as uh, her pillars are Dunwall, Empress, Assassin, right? So she's not, uh, uh, she's not in some gaudy costume or whatever. She's dressed like an Empress. She's got her traveling jacket on, her mud splattered boots, but her costume is very elegant, right? And her weapons are, she uses Corvo's sword, but she has her own crossbow. And then her powers are completely separate. Uh, and Corvo has like more like military guy uniform. You know, we put a lot of we uh, we put a lot of thought into the the fashion behind the characters in the world it's just part and parcel of, of the dishonored universe but um at some point we gravitated more and more toward giving emily a completely unique set of powers and it started to feel like a bold decision like what if she didn't have blink even wow what if she had this power called far reach that's different and can be used in many different ways that we'll talk about later um so she has a non-overlapping set of powers that are different than corvo's and uh, our lead designer uh dinga bakaba was committed from day one to saying she even should have her own animations, her own assassinations, her own movement, so the body feels very different. The movement of Emily feels different than the movement of Corvo. 
It's gonna make level design harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they just nod. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a, our level designers are really fantastic, and <laughs> they have to support all of these different play styles and all of these different powers. And you can play our entire game and not even take. Uh, some of the powers that other people really invest in heavily. So yeah, that's and a big the, the challenge. The flavors of the dialogue as well is different. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, it's the same campaign, just to be clear. It's a series of missions that you play through, um, but uh, y you know uh, their perspectives on the world are different because their ages are wildly different and their backgrounds are different. And their I actions, the response of other uh, characters to them. I, th I think Morgan and I can both say that one of the biggest questions that we were seeing yes. on social media out there is, does this game support co-op? Because obviously people are seeing the two characters. And as Nish B 3301 yes. who's going to get a nice reward for us, this question, in Dishonor 2, it was said you could play as both Emily or Corvo. Once you pick one character, can you change to the other? I mean, is there character right. swapping? Is there co-op? So for co-op, uh, the uh, answer is no. Uh, the kind of games we do is uh, really... Uh, uh, focused on the single player experience uh, with the player choices and the consequence etc you know and the, the the way you you play your own style your own way so it's uh, it's just a one single player game uh, where you make your choice at the beginning and then you cannot switch in the middle as well because you know uh, because there's a full story here where uh, you know, without revealing it's it makes sense that you cannot switch yeah. yeah no that was definitely a question I think people wanted to know if it's the same kind of not linear is like the terrible word for it. No, but sort of like directed that narrative, so that yeah. structured story. Wheel and spoke, I think, is you know a, a term that has been used before. Yeah, what, what we love to do is uh, make a series of very handcrafted missions where every room has been detailed. There's a lot of environmental storytelling, uh, and we 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 spend a lot of time thinking about like how would Corvo respond to this, how would Emily respond to that. Uh, so let's talk about the definitive edition. Um, you know, what can gamers expect from that? How are they going to be able to get their hands on it? Uh, did you say how and or when? How and when? All, how I and have when? all of the questions. <laughs> Sell me on your definitive edition, even though I completely love your game. We'll be getting it anyway. <laughs> right. So, uh, so it's coming actually uh, very soon, in a, in a few uh, weeks. Uh, and uh, the idea is that for it, it, both, it sh both should appeal to the people who already played the, the first one and wants to replay it on, the, on an updated uh, current gen, new visuals and enhanced uh, with all the, the DLCs and you know the DLCs are, are, are really a way for us to uh, go deeper on the, on the universe of, uh, of the original Dishonored and it's also a nice transition to Dishonored 2 because there are, there are bits that will refer to it. So that's for them, for the, the, the hardcore fans that want to revisit this in a better, uh, with better visuals. And also just for people who were waiting for Dishonored 2, who didn't have a chance to play the Dishonored 1 game back then, and now they, you know, they can play it, and because the, the visuals are on par with, you know, uh, with the gen, then it, it makes sense. It, it, oh. takes, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to make a game, and one of the saddest things about the industry is, based on the platform, yes. stuff is gone so quick. You know, you can pull out a... a Joan Jett album from the early 80s or whatever and listen to it it sounds great good luck like you know finding a finding a video game that you loved as a kid on an obscure platform or something right so we're happy to have it on the new consoles frankly but also as we started working as we as we were halfway through Dishonored we kind of figured out what it was and by the time our team was working with us on the DLC we really had a firmer grasp of the world and so it's cool to have the whole package together. Uh, and there's obviously stuff in the DLC. I'm not saying like huge story points, but you know, it can really kind of you know, get you ready, you know, m make you re-understand the world again as you prepare yourself for Dishonored 2. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Uh, super, super congratulations. I think one of the best surprises that's going to happen at this entire E3. Uh, so once again, uh, Definitive Edition soon, and a little further out, we're going to see Dishonored 2. Dishonored yes. 2. Great. Uh, we have a... Did we, did we set a date for this on the two, roughly? Uh, yeah, spring 2016. All right, well, I cannot wait. Guys, uh, get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're also going to talk a bit about some of the other announcements at the event. First, we had the Elder Scrolls collectible card game. We both love collectible, collectible card games, even though I kind of suck at them. You can be bad at something that you enjoy. It's all good. Most things. Uh, we saw a lot of great art taken from the Elder Scrolls universe. The lore is so deep within the series. There is a ton to work with. Yes, and surprisingly, this title is going to be available for iPad, which along with Fallout Shelter means Bethesda is going mobile. Let's take another look at the trailer for the Elder Scrolls Legends. Past. Present. Future. 
future. The Elder Scrolls hold all of Tamriel's history. That which has transpired, and that which is yet to be. They speak of heroes. challenges yet to be faced, and prophecies yet to be fulfilled. But they do not tell us your role, for your destiny is your own to craft. Will you fade into memory? Or will you carve your name into myth? Join those who have become legends. Next up, we have the long-awaited next installment in the Fallout series. We had an eye-opening look at it in the recently released trailer, but tonight Bethesda Game Studios revealed all. We saw so much that it would be difficult to cover everything, but here to help with some of the details is the game director, Todd Howard. Todd. Hello. That was amazing. We're yeah, very thank excited. You. The fans are excited. Everybody's excited. I'm scrunching my cards with excitement. <laughs> There's a lot. We're, we're excited. Uh, everybody in the office is excited as well. It took, uh, you know, waiting for this moment to finally un unveil the game. It was a really, really big thing for everybody in the team mm -hmm. um, and, and us as a company. Yes, how does it feel to finally go public with that? Are you relieved? It Are you feels excited? really good. Or like you, you want to people say to you like, so what are you working on? You're like, mm -hmm, <laughs> stuff. Um, so it, it does feel good to be able to just even tell your friends. You know, I will say the one that doing the mobile game, you know, doing shelter and then not having that leak in any way to finish it completely. Um, you know, everyone in the company was walking around with it on their phones to test it and like, you know, <laughs> oh we gotta get this out and like, you know. To do it and release a game and, and not have anybody know about it, it's really, yeah, really so cool. Yeah, someone's like, what are you playing? A tiny, tiny tower? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's far out. Far out. Shelby. Um, <laughs> so, I, I mean, secrets. I've always been fascinated by what your team can accomplish. And I think, you know, as you pointed out at the beginning of your presentation, that, that level of detail. I mean, what is sort of the mood of you and all of your team as you're making something as big and massive as a game like Skyrim, but you're also focused on details that are just so small in particular? Well, you know, we want to get transported in a world. So I think there are little details that you want to have um, you know, be there no matter what, that you can touch everything. And we kind of get in these debates as far as what's the gameplay there, but the more you can do that, the more you're suspending their disbelief that they are in this world, so when you do something crazy and have a death claw show up or these other things, um, you believe that as well. So um, we do obsess over the detail, and it, it goes back to our previous games and stuff you know, that I grew up on, like the Ultima games, and I can break bread, I can bake bread and do all of those things, so, um, Having it be a believable place is very important to us. Yeah. Um, so it's been a while since the Fallout game. A little while, as we kept getting reminded yes. um, by the fans. Um, how has the technology changed in that time? Well, clearly you have the next-gen consoles, um, and the PC can do a lot more now. And for the kind of things that we do, um, it's particularly the memory, actually. So having, having consoles with a lot more memory allows us to do big, dynamic things. Um, and and that's important to us. Yeah. Now, um, in, in, in terms of, of, of Fallout 4, you know, it is Boston. It there, is. There, there's nothing wrong with Boston. In fact, I have to say, one of the most common questions I was seeing on Twitter for me was to find out if every small town in Massachusetts was somehow <laughs> being included in the game. You can but, just mash them all together, right, into one town. We mess with scale <laughs> quite a bit. If you played Fallout 3 and you look at DC, <laughs> you'll see that um, we do change scale up quite a bit to kind of fit that we want to do and change up the landscape. But, but yeah, why like we was... don't like sitting on the 405. I don't want to sit on the exactly. 405 in a video even game. In, even in the apocalypse, <laughs> <laughs> with all the cars removed, I don't want to do that. But I'm curious, was, was, was there a particular reason that you guys were drawn to Boston? Um, there were a number. I, you know, we did some things in Fallout 3 that, that kind of reference it. Um, and you, know, you look around where you want to place a game, something like Fallout, and the Boston kind of New England area mm. has this, this good vibe of American history, but also like high tech stuff, and so it's it, it, it's a good fit for Fallout. Um, would you like a social media question? 
Sh You're do like, I? bring it on. Do I? <laughs> I don't have to answer it. <laughs> But um, they're still going to win that wonderful set of figurines. Oh, yes. Whether or not Todd is willing to answer yes, this I question. I did not get a figurine. <laughs> <gasps> he, uh, sorry, uh, at Chauncey127, I, I have think Todd's going to take your figurine. Um, his question is, if you could choose a perk from Fallout to use in real life, what would you choose? Hmm. Mysterious Stranger. <laughs> okay. You would? <laughs> yeah. No, I like that one. Yeah, who's like that guy? He's my, one. <laughs> He's my friend, Mysterious Stranger. I happen to like that perk in the game a lot too, so that's a, that's a it's tough one. It's a good one. one. Um, I'm saying I was going through all like the Fallout 4 perks in my head, and the ones I like I don't want to reveal yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, not that one, not that one. So it's, 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 we do have challenging a lot of cool six perks. months ahead of you. <laughs> we'll be talking about that stuff later. Yeah. I mean, we intentionally uh, don't cover it here, and it's even in 30 minutes, it's tricky to give people a perspective on everything we're doing because, believe it or not, there is more. I, 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 I I'm is. sure, but something that you did talk about, which I think got a big cheer from the audience, everybody was excited about, was the ability to create a settlement. This is something yep. I'm personally excited about. I know that I'm gonna spend my entire time making settlements. How important is that to the game if somebody doesn't wanna build? Are they gonna they be punished for that? They don't have to. We've always done kind of loose decorating and house building in our previous games where you could you, know, you just buy a pack and someone decorates mm -hmm. it. We notice people taking all of their items and decorating on their own. Um, and when you look at Fallout, doing something like that, just, just it just fits. Um, and so, um, you know, those other games that do that, Minecraft and those kind of things really inspire us. You'll see some of those inspiration on, you know, looking at how people build these really complex machines just in Minecraft with some simple stuff. And we felt that we could do that in a really cool way with the world of Fallout and our, and our tech uh, allowing it. And I, I, th I think it kind of raises the level of where I could do interior decorating, which is sad mattress in the corner and you know, some airplane <laughs> chairs over there. That, that's kind of where my brain is. But, but what really is neat, and it, it fits with that and more that you showed, is how everything in the game has this new sense of value. You know, yeah. you, 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 you get all those objects, and you can break them down, and you can build so many objects out of it. Just from kind of a logistical perspective, I mean, how do you sort of account for how many things that can be made in the game and how many things can be turned into a component that can then be turned into something very you know, fun and useful. Our designers crunch a lot of numbers. Um, <laughs> so we can look at how that breaks down. But there's also this moment like what feels right. Some of that stuff, and you'll see it in the video, is perk gated. Um, but having all of those things have value actually has changed the gameplay in ways we didn't expect. Like usually in our games, people might collect that stuff and it's, it's all for selling, for, that's your main way of getting money. But now you realize, like when we're playing, if you find like, you know, a lamp, that has good stuff, like don't sell the lamp. So you end up... Uh, hoarding, I you, believe. You end up hoarding, but like, <laughs> it changes the balance of the game in a very interesting way where you're not immediately, I'm going to take this and sell it, I'm going to take this and sell it, I'm going to take this and sell it, because you're looking at everything saying, I'm going to take this and, do I want to sell it? It has a filament in it, and I need that for, oh, what do I? And so it's got a nice, um, it's got a nice tension, just in the junk. Does that make sense? You know, that, that, that's yeah. Do you think that, 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 that as a player, you'll start to develop kind of an interesting taxonomy? That's something that in, in, like in, in our present day, yeah. may, okay, I, that's a stupid lamp. But they were saying, oh, hold on, that's a lamp. I think I want, if I get four more lamps, I can I'm yeah. go on the lamp quest. <laughs> yeah, there are these, uh, we do have the, it's referenced in three, the Giddy Up Buttercup. It's a, like a play robotic horse. Yeah. And it has tons of screws, which are really important. So whenever you see a Giddy Up Buttercup, like, oh. Jackpot for screws. I need screws to build this thing I want to build. Um, so we're gonna go back to another social media. Uh, this is from at four number four all out. That's an awesome. It, it's a play on words yes. and numbers all at the That's same an awesome time. Twitter handle. I like what that. What things did Bethesda Game Studios learn from making Skyrim and Fallout Three that they wanted to change and implement into Fallout Four? You know, because you guys are always in an iterative and ever evolving mm -hmm. process. Well, I wouldn't say we're taking a specific feature. One of the things that we do, particularly given the success of Skyrim, you, you get a lot more, we'll call it data, on how people experience an open game. And so we don't ever want to give that up. We'll sacrifice certain things to make it completely open. Um, whereas um, in other games, they'll be open, but you can be, if you're on a quest or something, they'll shut down other things. And um, we're, we, in our game, you can be on every quest at once. Um, so 
I, I don't want to spoil anything, but one of the things I think that we, we've spent more time on is how does someone experience an open world in doing all these things, and how do we tell a really strong story along with that? So that's been something that um, I think we've, we've made a lot of good inroads on that we'll talk about later. Well, and the game is voiced. <laughs> Your character is voiced. Yeah, that is, is really something that we've not seen in either in Elder Scrolls or Fallout. Was, was that a tough decision to make? Yes and no. I mean, it's one of those things where if you look at stories being told really well in games, a lot of them have a voiced character. So it's like, if you weren't looking at what we did before, you would expect the character to be voiced. Um, and our main, you know, our main kind of uh, anxiety with doing a voice character was finding the right voices. Um, we have two great actors uh, doing the male and the female. And um, they've been fabulous. And also, how much time they had, because we didn't want that to hold back any of our writing. So each of them have spent, they've been recording stuff for the last two years. They've each recorded over 13,000 lines of dialogue. So it's, it's a lot of time in the studio for an actor. <laughs> um, and it's, it's really come out great and allows us to do some storytelling and emotional moments that we, we, we quite couldn't hit before. Um, we have something fun over here yeah. that I'm going to sneak off. Off camera, camera magic. You introduced it. And grab it. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. So we just saw a picture of this in the actual showcase, but we get to sit here and play with it. I know, you guys. Yeah. It's cool. Now, obviously, that's where your phone would go, and you had to have the second screen experience. Right. I mean, you don't need this. You that's a temporary screen that. right now. But right, yeah. that's... This is a fake little... Imagine And it does have are. foam inserts, so it has foam inserts to really hold well all the popular... Uh, smartphones, and, and, they and probably you can probably even make a phone in an insert. I think insert. it does come with one where you could, yeah. You it's could fairly it. easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it comes with a little stack of them. Yeah. Um, it really came out great. It does light up too. Like it has. Is that oh, one there do is. It? I know. I let's see. The power the button. The power button. Yep. There so it, it does have power. That power doesn't do anything to your phone. That's all for touch it. Um, but it does. You know, it lights up. It has a base too. That's cool. So you can set it up. Um, we wanted to make it really wearable. We know our fans like to. Hey, you're gonna wear it when you play the game. Yeah you know, the cosplay. Um, so it has the, the straps inside. It doesn't, you know, it's, uh, it's a very wearable smartwatch. No, <laughs> it's the smarter watch. I think that's how I'm going to start regarding it. I but definitely no, it's, liked it's, in the video how you heard the sound of the Pip-Boy booting up. I feel like that's the, the sort of that old, old, old hard drive sound. Yeah, that I feel yeah, like yeah. people aren't going to, don't know what that is anymore. And so this comes on sale with the uh, the special edition. I think the, it, we're calling it the Pip Boy edition. Yes. The Pip Boy edition that's going to go on sale for pre-orders in a few days. Is that correct? My understanding is it'll probably be up right away. You know, we wanted to hold yeah. back the announcement right. for yeah. tonight, so I don't know. It takes a little time for for retail to prop everything. <laughs> but, but, you we know, don't want to tell them because they always leak it. Yes, so, um, you always but, see you it. Know, the best we'd rather website. have a little delay in when you can buy it than hear about it beforehand. But Shelter, that is available, I believe, right now. Yeah, Apple was, you know, they're pressing the button. There. It takes a while for the servers to kind of, you know, roll across the globe. So <laughs> I honestly don't know where to, it depends what server you've been you're a little busy to. for the past couple of hours, <laughs> I would well, have. Well, it's say. the first time we've done it, so I don't know, you know, how long does it take to be available where we are? Yeah. You know, is it in a half hour or is it in three hours? I, well, I don't know. it really is the cherry on one sort of marvelous Sunday that we've experienced throughout this entire evening. Todd, thank you so, thank so, you guys so, for, so you know much what? for joining us. I have to say, us. it is great seeing you two back doing this. It's I have some really a lot of fond memories yeah. doing the show and, and just having you be a part of this, it's awesome. Well, you know what, you're the guy we would do it for, so I think it all worked out very, very well. All right, guys, that is it from the Bethesda E3 Showcase at the Dolby Theater. I want to thank everyone at home and on Twitch for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, if you need your Fallout fix, you can actually download Fallout Shelter from the App Store right now. And if you want to know all the news as it comes out, follow at BethBlog on Twitter to get more info on everything you saw here tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right, good, good night. Bye-bye.